Assalamu alaikum Dr. Saheb. I am from Kashmir. Can you please suggest some tips that you followed in your life to be successful in life? This question that can I give some tips for why was I successful in life? This calls for a long lecture. And this is a question and succession which time doesn't permit. But if I have to say a few points, number one, I would say that the most important tip is that have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah whatever he destines for you is the best and never ever complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever that happens in your life. Some of the advices that I can give, I'm not going in order, I'm just whatever can, what's coming in my mind. Number one is that they read the Quran every day, along with the translation, if you don't understand the, as uh, Arabic as a language, and see to it that you implement on the advice given in the Quran. So if you read the Quran with translation, with understanding, and impl implement on the guidance given in the Quran, inshallah, you will be a successful person. Other tips are see to it that your ibadah is in place. Number one is tawheed, that I faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't get involved with shirk, that have full faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two is your salah. Your salah is the most important deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you on the day of judgment. And see to it that you pray, if you are a gen, pray five times salah in the mosque, in congregation, your life will change. Alhamdulillah, Muslims are praying, but a very small percentage pray five times, and a smaller percentage pray five times with congregation in the mosque. Besides praying the five times salah, see to it that you also pray the tahajjud salah, that is the qayam al layl, get up in the last one third of night, and ask Allah during this last one third, and inshallah, Allah will answer your prayer. And if Allah doesn't answer your prayer, Allah will give you something better than what you have prayed for. So praying in the last one third of night is, alhamdulillah, one of the important factors. And there are various verses in the Quran and the Hadith that Allah blesses those people who sacrifice their, their sleep for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the time is short, I cannot keep on speaking. I normally feel that the maximum time that you spend in the day for any activity, number one should be Salah. I know it's difficult and since I've come to Malaysia, I see to it that I pray, I spend more time in praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than even sleeping. And this is what I believe the Prophet did. The Prophet slept very little, maybe there's no hadith mentioning how many hours he slept, but if you do a calculation that he used to read Isha, then have dinner, then go to sleep, then get up and pray the most of the night. We can analyze that his sleep may be somewhere between three to four hours or three to four and a half hours. There's no exact, but surely it will be a few hours. And Alhamdulillah, on average I sleep for about three and a half hours, sometimes two and a half hours, sometimes three and a half, sometimes four, but on average three hours to three and a half hours. And I see to it, I spend more time in Salah. If I count the time of salah, that is, when I say salah means from, from that I may hear the other and I do my wudu, I walk towards the mosque, I count in the part of salah, then pray the salah, then do dua, then come back, walking time is also counted, all put together into the tajud, it on average comes to about five hours. In, but if I have to calculate only the pure salah without the walking to the mosque, etc., it comes somewhere close to about four hours, mashallah. So, this is one tip of life that, see to it that your major activity, in the day is salah. So if you pray your five times salah in the mosque with, with the sunnat al maqada sunnat al maqada as well as hajjud, the qayam al-layl, never rakat, if you can pray as long as possible, two hours is better, if not two hours then one and a half hour, if not one and a half hour, one hour, one, at least half an hour. And see to you also pray your salat al-duha. There are many tips I can give, keep on giving. So I spoke about the Tawheed, I spoke about Salah, of course. Then the fasting is there that you, besides fasting, the first fast in the month of 
after Ramadan, of course, see to it that you fast during the Arafah, during the 9th, 10th, and 11th of Muharram, during the first nine days of Dhul Hijjah, the three days of Ayamul Bid, the six days of Shawwal, and Monday and Thursday if you can. So these are the fasting. As far as charity is concerned, minimum two and a half percent zakat is compulsory for every Muslim. But I always suggest, and I tell the people, and I said that in various question answers and my lectures, that see to it that you give maximum charity what you can. Start with, besides the, the further that is two and a half percent of your savings, give 10 percent of your earnings, then increase it to 15, then 20, then 25. I tell every Muslim, try and come to give majority of your earnings in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I told my son also that when you start earning, see to it that you at least give 51% of your earnings. Start with 51, don't start with 10 or 20. That is for the normal. You are a dai. So start with giving 51% of your earnings in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I tell to my staff in Bombay, we had more than 500 employees. Even to a person who is a sweeper who may be earning about 10,000 rupees a month. I have to say that, okay, you may not have to give zakat because they are a poor person. Give 10% of your earning. That is 1,000 rupees every month in charity. You may be poor. What happens when you start giving 10% charity? Maybe 1,000. You have 9,000 left with you. Maybe within a few months, Allah increases your salary from 10,000 rupees to 15,000 rupees. Now, when you give 10%, you are giving 1,500 or 15,000. You have 13,500 left with you. Previously, you have 10,000 you had. When you start giving 10%, you gave 1,000, you have 9,000 remaining. Now, Allah increase your side to 15,000. You are giving 10%, 1,500, you are having 13,500 left. Increase your charity to 20%. So now, when you are earning 15,000, you are giving 3,000 every month in charity. What is remaining with you? It's 12,000 more than before. Allah increases your salary from 15,000 to 20,000. You keep on increasing the percentage in charity in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the balance percentage of yours reduces, but the amount increases. And this is what I've done throughout my life. And I advise my students, and I advise my staff, and I advise my son also. The more you give in charity, the percentage, the percentage remaining with you is less, but the amount is more. And when you're doing a business, always make Allah your partner in business. And how can you make Allah a smaller partner? When Allah is your partner, you can't make Allah 5%, 10%, 20%, not at all. Minimum you should make Allah a partner, that is 51%. So I told my son that when you start earning, minimum you start giving charity 51% of your earning. When you do business. Then when Allah increases, you increase the percentage of a charity, 55, 60, 70, 75. However much you do, Allah will increase. People normally are afraid. Oh, impossible. And when some people come and many people come and, Oh, Dr. Zakir, you have done a good for them. Can you give me some advice? And when I say that, why don't you start giving charity for what you are doing? No, I'm giving zakat. As though what giving zakat is something great they're doing. I said, that is the minimum. And when I tell them, start doing charity, MashaAllah, you know, of wealth. When I tell them, start 10%, 10%, but I'm earning $100,000 a month. So $100,000, only 10% you can't give. Every month I should give $10,000, it's too much. When Allah is making you earn $100,000 a month, what is 10%? You should give 25%, then increase it. It's very difficult. The richer you are, it is more difficult to give a bigger percentage. If you're poor, it's easy to give. So that's the reason our beloved Prophet said, it is easier for a poor man to enter Jannah than a rich man. So what you have to understand, this is the test. So tips of life is that make Allah your partner in your business, in your earning. And you see that what is remaining is much more bigger. The last tip, there are many tips, I can keep on giving tips, is that see to it that you make your life simple. If the requirements to lead your life, the basic requirements is less, no one can pressurize you. And I tell the dai that if you are a dai, see to it that your requirement to lead a life the monthly requirement is bare minimum because if your requirement is bare minimal then you don't require the wealth so no one can pressurize you no one can coax you to give answer that them 
you can be free. So make your requirement very less. Then you see the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And most of the time we are so much engrossed in worldly affairs and worldly things that you tend to world, run after worldly things. And see to it that if you are doing dawah, I tell to the dais that spend the maximum time in dawah. In one particular activity it is salah, but overall if you are doing a full time job, see to it that you spend the maximum. A normal human being when he does a job, an 8 hours job, a 9 hours job, he spends about 7 hours purely if you remove the time for breaks and for salah and for eating, about 7 hours a day. If you are a dai, spend not 7 hours, maybe one and a half time, that is 10 hours, 10 and a half hours in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see to it that if you dedicate your life for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you become a full time dai, there is no better profession. So if you want to choose a profession, the tip of the life is Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 33. Allah says, Woman Hassan Ukala Mimman Doil Allah wa Amil Sali Hom Wakala in the Nimli Muslim. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, who works righteousness and says that I'm a Muslim? So the best profession you can choose in your life is not a doctor, is not an engineer. It's not a lawyer, it's not a businessman, it is a dai. And Allah says in the Quran that there cannot be a better profession than a dai. So if you have to choose a profession, the best profession is conveying the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the few tips that I could think of. Of course, as I told you, it's called the, this answer can go on for hours and hours together. And may Allah accept whatever little bit of effort we are doing in His way. And, and may Allah help us and make us enter Jannah the Firdaus, inshallah.